Hello, welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering at IIT Bombay. In this lecture, we are going to use GNU radio to explore some of the concepts that we have seen in previous lectures. In particular, we are going to look at the how we can practically evaluate the likelihood function for the presence of a signal and explore how impairments such as noise affect detection of the phase offset. By looking at these impairments and how phase offset and other such problems essentially affect your parameter estimation, we can build ingredients that go into practical communication systems as well. So, let us begin our exploration of this with GNU radio. Let us first consider the likelihood function of the presence of a signal S of t under AWGN. In this case, if you see the hypothesis HS and HN are to be compared based on the distribution of Z and much like our binary signaling example where we were figuring out the probability of making an error when you performed binary signaling, in this case as well, the likelihood function turns out to have a very similar form and the, the boundary, the decision region boundary is actually norm S square upon 2. Since this is very similar to the binary signaling example except that it's with norm S square, you can try this on your own and we will not be repeating this particular example. The first example that we are going to implement in GNU radio is the phase offset and ML phase estimation. Remember in this case that the carrier at the receiver or rather the local oscillator at the receiver has a phase offset with respect to the carrier at the transmitter. So in this case we have to find out what that offset is and this can be done by using an overlap with the template function s of t and figuring out the phase of the resulting integral. Let us implement this on GNU radio. To implement our phase estimation approach, we will once again have to put together the complete basic com digital communication example with baseband and passband and all those. So let us quickly do this because it is a repetition of something that we have covered earlier. We will first set our sampling rate to 192.000. We will create a variable, so, so control F for command F and type variable and our first variable will be, we will double click this, we will call it SPS that is the samples per symbol and since we want 8000 symbols per second, we will write this as samp rate divided by and the double divide is for integer 8000. And we will also do control F and grab another variable and this variable will be our carrier frequency which we will call FS. Now we are ready to put together our system. Let us first get, uh, we need to do phase estimation, yes. Let us first get a random source to begin with but later I will remove the random source for reasons which will become clear later. So control F for command F, I will say R A N. DOM, I'll get a random source. The random source, we will change it to byte. We'll choose QPSK and make it go from 0 to 4. The next thing I am going to get is a constellation encoder. So I'm going to say type E, N, C, and we will have this constellation encoder maybe below. I'll just type control F instead of this, I'll type control F C O N S T. So I have my constellation encoder over here and while I have the screen I will also grab the constellation object that I will need to specify the constellation. Let me call this my const m y c o n s t. It's a very standard QPSK constellation and this will also be my const. We will add a throttle next, control F or command F, THR, let's grab a throttle. Now, 
to ensure that our bandwidth constraints are met let us add a pulse shaper so i'll get an rrc pulse so control f or command f rrc and we'll get these rrc filter tabs as a variable this rrc filter tab let's actually have the symbol rate here as 8000 and the rest of the parameters can be kept as they are the gain has to be square root of 24 which is roughly 4.89 so we'll just write that now i need an interpolating fir filter so i'll say control f or command f i'll say inter so interpolating fir filter over here the interpolation factor is sps the tabs are rrc underscore tabs which i did not name that okay so i'll just copy this and i'll name these tabs as rrc tabs so now my interpolating filter is ready i just need to take this to pass band and remember taking this to pass band involves multiplying this by e power j 2 pi fct and taking the real part i'm going to do that by first adding a multiplier control f command f m u l t and i'll get a multiply block and by connecting this i then need to add a signal source so control f for command f s i g n now remember the signal source which is complex has the form of e power j 2 by f c t if you really want a cosine you must make this float but we'll keep this the frequency will be f c and for scaling purposes the amplitude will be 1.414 that is we want it to be root 2 finally we will just take the real part of the signal and that is our pass band signal so control f or command f complex to real and we have our complex signal and we can actually add noise right here so let us actually just uh, add a noise source so i'm going to say control f or command f and noise source and we'll make the noise source real by double clicking it and choosing float and amplitude i'll call it n o i s e s t d noise s t d we'll add a qt range to control the noise control f or command f i'll say range and this qt gui range we will set the name to noise std and the values i think we'll make it zero by default start at zero stop at three and the step let it be 0 0.1 and i'm going to just add these so control f command f add and double click the add make it float we'll connect these and we will take we'll have to take this at the receiver so it's very inconvenient to continue on the right because you can't see the rest so i'm just going to add a virtual sync v i r t so this virtual sync and i'm going to call it rx sig because that's the receiver signal rx sig <clears throat> now uh, this is this variable should be fc as opposed to fs sorry fc make it forty thousand. so we have everything set now now at the receiver we will create a virtual source which takes this rx sig and gets back the constellation so let's grab this virtual source right here go a little below now this virtual source should have the stream id rx sig so that we get the same signal back and we have already added noise now if you remember what we should do at the receiver we will mix it with two sinusoids a sine and a cosine and put low pass filters so let us grab a signal source so control f or command f i'll type signal source and we will place the signal source here we will make the frequency fc but amplitude should be 1.414 but let's also add a phase offset let's say of p h a s e underscore o f f s e t okay we will create this variable in a minute and this should be float now we will copy this control c or paste it control v 
and double click over here and this amplitude should be negative this has the and this should be sine now we are ready we just need the phase offset as a variable let's do that Control F V A R and we will call this P H A S E underscore offset for now we will set this to zero we will attend to it later now we will multiply these signal sources with this signal so I am just going to take this multiply box block and control C and control V but I'll double click it and convert it to float. I'll connect it over here, connect the signal over here. I'll duplicate this multiply block, control C, control V. I'll connect this over here, connect my signal over here. Now I need a pair of low pass filters. Now before I add the low pass filters, um, I mean, when I add the low pass filters, remember that they will introduce some delay. So I have to account for that delay. So let me also add a delay range and a delay block. So control F for command F. I'll say range. And this QTGUI range will get, will be called this delay. And the delay, let it be a number from, you know default thing to 0 and it goes from 0 to it should go only up to SPS minus 1 so we'll just say SPS it doesn't matter and it should be of type int and we will also grab a delay block control F D E L A Y and we'll put the delay block over here make sure that the delay is linked to that range by typing delay finally we need a pair of low pass filters so control F for command F low pass filter now this low pass filter should be real its decimation we can keep as one that is no problem cutoff frequency should be fc and we'll keep the transition with as a thousand hertz now we need a pair for this similar low pass filter for the other arm maybe i can just move things a bit above so that you get space yes Control C, Control V, and I have another low pass filter over here. And I'm going to now add multipliers. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to rather connect this over here, connect this over here, I'm done. I'm going to now convert this to a baseband signal by just converting it to a complex data type. So Control F or Command F, float to complex. And I have my oversampled receiver waveform, which I'm going to delay appropriately. And finally, I'm going to put a decimating FIR filter. So control F or command F, D E C I, decimating FIR filter. We'll move this to the side. And once you have the decimating FIR filter, it should again have SPS as the decimation. And the taps are the same, RRC taps. We can reverse them if we want, but it's symmetric, so it doesn't matter. And finally, we will place a QTGUI constellation sync to make sure that the constellation is received well. So control F for command F, QT, or rather let's do const C O N S T. Look at the bottom, you have this QTGUI constellation sync. You can use the arrow keys to rotate it if you want. So I've rotated it over here and connected it over here. Now let us execute this flow graph and see what happens. So as you can see that there's lots of this effect and if you remember from a previous experiment if you make this delay 9 you get back the constellation oops correctly even when you have noise you can see that the constellation is pretty good. If you get the delay wrong you lose some quality if you have the delay right, you get the constellation pretty well. Okay, so we are set. Now, to check the effect of the phase offset, let us double click the signal source. We have this phase, uh, this should not be offset, apologies. This should actually be initial phase. And we'll do the same thing over here. It should not be an offset. It should be initial phase. Now let us set the initial phase to something like pi by 8. 
will type 3.1415 divided by 8 and if you execute the flow graph you will see already that there is some hint that this is a skewed uh, constellation so if you set the delay to be 9 which is what we found out was right you can see that the constellation is skewed now what explains this the reason is because the i and q which would have been there had you done the phase or the receiver had you had the phase at the receiver correctly are not present and therefore you have this extra rotation if you remember in the lecture we derived this fact by actually multiplying cos 2 pi fct with cos 2 pi fct plus phi and sine with the corresponding plus phi and we found that there is a rotation of the constellation if you want to check for other offsets also you can just for example let's say pi by 4 which will essentially return the constellation because it corresponds to yeah so this kind of return meaning it will rotate it by pi by 4 so this point at which is 1 plus 1 j by root 2 went to 1 j because of the pi by 2 rotation and if you rotate it by pi by 4 sorry pi by 2 rather then you will essentially get back the original constellation of course you must remember that actually this point is actually this point in disguise because of a pi by 2 rotation now these kinds of calibrations can always be done but if you don't know the phase offset then you will make errors when you detect now how do you find out the phase offset so one strategy is if you are looking for a known symbols approach you can actually connect you can actually send something that is known for some time let us take a simple example to understand how this phase can be detected let us temporarily remove this random source by clicking on it and pressing delete and let's actually add a constant source so let's say control f c o n s t and grab this constant source and double click this constant source make it output the byte 0 constantly now the byte 0 corresponds to the first element of my const the first element of my const is minus 1 minus 1 j therefore if I make the phase offset 0 I'll make it 0 temporarily then if I execute this flow graph in the absence of noise you will get minus 1 minus 1 j by root 2 which is the expected constellation point even in the presence of noise now if you have a phase offset this minus 1 minus 1 j will be rotated by that amount for example let's say that you have a rotation of pi by 4 3.1415 divided by 4 if you execute this you will find that this constellation point has undergone clockwise rotation of pi by 4 the reason why it is a clockwise rotation is because the phase offset is applied at the receiver if you again now find that the phase offset is pi by 2 let's also make it in the presence of noise you will find that it's okay let's check this phase of should not be 5 by should be pi by 2 not 42 yes now you will find that this minus 1 minus 1 j point has actually gone to minus 1 actually minus 1 plus 1 j this basically means that if you send a known training sequence from the transmitter that can be used to identify and correct for the phase offset so in the training mode in a PSK or similar constellation you can use this fact to identify and correct for the phase offsets to complete let us go back to our random source let me remove this constant source let me do control f for command f and say r a n d o m and we'll get a random source we'll again double click make the random source go from 0 through 3 by pressing 4 here make it a byte and if we connect it back we get back our original performance uh, we get we have to set this delay to 9 uh, let us also just do a couple of things let's set the default delay to 9 so that we don't have to keep doing it let's also add a bit of noise 
and let's say that the default noise is 0 0.02. Now, you can see that, you know, if you have noise, then you really need to be careful because if you have noise like this, where it can go into the neighboring uh, bin as well. So let's do one thing. Let's actually increase the QTGI concentration points number of points. So if I double click this and say 10240 and let's say I also have 10,000 random values here. If you have more noise, you can see that in these levels, you are bound to make mistakes. In such a situation, what is typical is to actually have a more or a prolonged training period wherein you actually train so much so that you can average the noise out. In other words, you take many measurements and average out the noise so that you get a sufficiently high signal to noise ratio and use that to reduce the impact of noise. Otherwise, you can't really calibrate if you have too much noise. Of course, even blind strategies are not immune to noise. They are in fact much more affected by noise and may require even a larger amount of training. So to summarize, whether it is in the presence of noise or, you know, uh, whether it's in the presence of noise with training or without any training and blind approach, you have to estimate the phase using some method by using the property of the signal or something. And only then can you reliably detect the symbols that are sent. Now, the next thing that we will look at is the phase calculation. One remark over here is that if you have a constellation like QAM4, QPSK that is or something like QAM16 as well, once you figure out this kind of phase offset and it's a frequency offset, by just looking at the distance of these symbols from the boundary, you can find out the amplitude A. If you remember, Finding the amplitude A was also one of our challenges and that can be found using this approach as well. Of course, there is a blind strategy and a training based strategy, but it boils down to finding the distance of these constellation points from the origin or fitting the constellation properly. That is also a remark that is the maximum likelihood estimate of the amplitude is also something that is implicitly captured over here. In this lecture, you got a taste of some of the receiver impairments that you can model using GNU radio. In particular, the presence of offsets in phase and how they can be visible on GNU radio in the presence of noise, as well as some of the other aspects like parameter estimation of the amplitude are some aspects that you have seen so far. In subsequent lectures, you are going to look at other receiver impairments such as frequency offsets and methods to overcome these. Thank you.